Just lift up your voices. Lift up a new song to the Lord. Just sing a new song in heavenly tongues with words. Just sing a new song to the Lord. Bethel friends and family. This is such a night of anticipation for us. This is our first evening of our Open Heavens Conference and we have yes, Pastor Bill yeah, Johnson uh, with us in the house. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we get to do this again. Yes, finally, me too. Finally. Another, <laughs> another year and yep, another yep. level of glory. Yeah, mm -hmm. amen. Bring that on. Mm -hmm. Um, Pastor Bill, for many of our viewers, we often revisit this every year because it's pivotal. We are going to step into a, a conference 
that was really in your heart from the very beginning, open heavens. Yeah. How would you describe an open heaven? It's, um, it's where the, the heavenly realm mm -hmm. has pronounced influence on the earthly realm. Okay. There's just a, a seamless connection mm -hmm. between those two realities. It's more than uh, uh, governmental or, or uh, miracles or yes. its presence. Yes. It's actually God himself is, God. is heaven. There's mm -hmm. nothing in heaven apart from his presence. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about that, you talk about a manifestation of the yeah. presence of the Spirit of God on us, mm -hmm. in a room, in a region, where you literally you just step into this heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be how we learn to live. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's, yes. that's the invitation. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in Revelation uh, chapter 4, verse 1, I think it is, he says, mm -hmm. he says come up here. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an invitation from the Lord, come up into his realm. Pass. Paul said we're seated in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, it's the heart of God for us mm -hmm. to live with this sense of open heaven mm -hmm. over us. And, Incredible. and so that's, that's we're just trying to learn. <laughs> yes, yes, we all are. Uh, yeah. We were joking uh, or, or just teasing in the studio um, <clears throat> with Pastor Bill saying that uh, every year we revisit the same question. But yeah, the Lord yeah, adds to yeah. our revelation. He adds yeah. to even our experience yeah. of what that means. Bill, if you would look at uh, a moment in your timeline, or even as a house, what comes to mind where you have experienced something of an open heaven in your own life, or perhaps it was a moment that happened within our congregation or our global family? You know, there honestly are... There are so many uh, extended moments mm -hmm. where you become so aware mm -hmm. of him, and that's really what it is. Yes. And um, th there, there are moments where it's not hard to think of him, mm -hmm. it's hard to miss him. Yes, wow. He's, he's so pronounced in his, his thoughts, his values, mm -hmm. his love, his mm -hmm. deep affection. And uh, there are moments, yeah. a lot, frequently in worship, where you know, it says he inhabits the praises of his people. So there are, there are moments in worship where, where you just become overwhelmingly aware of him. Yeah. It's not like I have to mm -hmm. concentrate to mm -hmm. you know, somehow believe that God is here with us. Yes. No, he is so overwhelmingly yes. present. Wow. And those are the moments. There are, of course, are individual moments that stand out. Yes. Uh, where just the glory comes in and, and everybody is just, I've seen it silent for yeah. 10, 15, close mm -hmm. to 20 minutes mm -hmm. with not, not, a, not an utterance of yeah. any person. Yes. Everybody is stunned mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. and there's just this awe. Mm -hmm. There are times where that glory comes cool. and all the, every, everybody can see the yes. manifested presence of the Lord and yes. the children just run right into the middle yes. of it with such joy. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's so hard to describe, but so mm -hmm. wonderful. You mm -hmm. know, you never forget it, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. And it's available, I think, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yes. This is the, yeah. the gift <laughs> of Jesus' yeah. death and resurrection. Yeah. 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 So yeah, powerful. Sure. <clears throat> Pastor Bill, this conference has been happening for years and years yeah. in our family, yeah. Yeah. in this global family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you share with us in the very beginning, if anything comes to mind, the Holy Spirit just highlights it to you, what were some of those initial, if we look at the history of Open Heavens, the initial motivation to set aside uh, uh, several days um, to focus in on this aspect that God has made available to us? The driving, mm -hmm. the driving force behind this is, first of all, is just to honor the Holy Spirit. Uh, just to yes. just to give him place to do what he wants, yes. and the, the you know the big school that all of us are in is mm -hmm. to learn to cooperate, Amazing. just learn learn to do what he's doing, yes. you know, yes. and so the just giving him place mm -hmm. where um, he he's not he doesn't exist for me to direct him. Yes, he's not at my control. Yes. I'm at his. Yes, I, as I've been saying lately, he doesn't mm -hmm. work for me. I work for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so giving him place yes. in, in our affection, okay. in our, our love for him. Mm -hmm. Second is for the people of God that we have the privilege of loving and mm -hmm. serving. Mm -hmm. Bring them into a trans 
transformational encounter with him. Wow, yes. You know, we've seen it happen mm -hmm. where there's people who just in moments, maybe, they, yeah. maybe they've had years and years mm -hmm. and years of torment mm -hmm. and Absolutely. stuff on their lives, and in moments they're free, and it's, it's completely unexplainable. Yes. Except, yes. except he came. Powerful. And, uh, and sometimes it's physical diseases mm -hmm. that people just get yes. healed from. Sometimes it's just the people, for me, the biggest thing is for people to, uh, to discover God actually knows and mm -hmm. loves me. Yes. M me. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a voice in a crowd. Yes. I'm an individual that the Father loves. Profound. And that's, uh, man, if I can give him first place yes. and touch that person, that's what I want to do. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah, I'm is. even thinking back, just leading up to our time together, Ruth Moore and myself sat down with our online family and we began to recount testimonies where God has mm -hmm. moved in an online space. So yeah. as we've been wow. streaming mm -hmm. uh, the, the miracles of God and, and really so beautiful just to capture this moment right now yeah. Yeah. where this is the reality mm -hmm. of what our online friends and family are <laughs> experiencing. <laughs> yeah that not even whether we are in the room or not, yeah. this is the nature of God, this is the heart of God, yes. and thank you for setting up this space. Oh, so that yeah. I know we'll yeah. echo every person on this chat right now, but thank you for yeah. setting up this space yeah. where really as staff we get to serve our congregation, we get to serve mm -hmm. our guests and even our mm -hmm. online community yeah. with a space to meet with God. Yeah. Well, it's remarkable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a joy. Mm -hmm. We need it too. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know. I met one of our um yeah. one of our community who is joining us for the conference mm -hmm. and she said, Oh, I can't wait to receive. And then I told her today, I'm in the same boat yeah. as you. Amen. I'll be alongside you. Amen. Receive Amen. it from the Lord. Yeah. Pastor Bill, as we as you look forward to the next few days, we've even just gathered as a staff mm -hmm. to pray. Is there anything specific stirring in your heart? that you are trusting God for as we gather together in this conference? I've, uh, Bethel Music just released an album mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago called Simple. Yes. And I really feel there's, there's weight. There's, yes, uh, yes. there's presence on that mm -hmm. word, on that theme, mm -hmm. on that idea. Mm -hmm. I know for me in the last uh, year or so, yes. I've had to dial everything down and yes. simplify. Yes. And it's it's not yes. uh, it's not reducing in the mm -hmm. sense of a setback. Mm -hmm. It's reducing mm -hmm. so that you're capable of going forward. Powerful. It's simplifying. Thank you, God. And I really I really think mm -hmm. that the Lord. What I pray is is, is that the Lord yes. engages yes. with us yes. in such a way that we hear clearly, we see mm -hmm. clearly, mm -hmm. and we're willing to stop being so complicated. I love it. And just love him and love people yes. and, and simplify to what's really important. Powerful. What's what's going to last? What's mm -hmm. going to be important to us mm -hmm. in a hundred years? Powerful. In eternity. What's going to yes. be important? And live there. Yes. And uh, and that's that's the theme yes. of my life in this mm -hmm. last uh, probably maybe year and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> Amen. I'm following your lead. Yeah, yeah, well. We all are. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that. So yeah. powerful. Um, I'm I'm seeing just a ton of our community that's joining us online, and uh, a ton of them just saying, just trusting God for restoration. Sharif for her family, her sister, um, a relational restoration. I can see um, Kath Walden. Kath, we were chatting <laughs> together with Pastor Bill, sharing the testimony of God's miracle power. A woman who couldn't walk and. Yeah. Um, was uh, struggling with neurological um, issues for years and years, and Kath today has experienced the miracle Come healing on. of Jesus. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, we're full of faith as a community, as a church, for God, not only for a table to be set before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That really yeah. is of primary importance, and we're so excited yeah. for you at home to experience that in your space, in your home. And then I know that... As we have our guests and our staff, there's a table set before yes. before you at home that yeah. you would taste and see that the Lord is good. Pastor Bill, would you take a moment and just pray yeah, over or, or, yeah. or bless us as we head yeah. into... We have worship in just a few moments yeah. with Brian yeah. and Jen yeah. and then our guests from yes. Upper Room, which yeah. is so yeah. exciting. Yeah, is. And we can't wait yeah. to gather around the Word of God. Amen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Father, help yeah. us to get it. 
<laughs> Thank you, God. Help us, yes. help us to get it. Yes. Let, let there be yes. clarity of heart, okay. clarity of mind, and that Thank peace that so overwhelms mm -hmm. us that simplicity yeah. is appealing, yeah. that we Thank value you, what Jesus. you value. Mm -hmm. We celebrate what you celebrate. I pray for this in Jesus' Thank name, you. that you would be glorified. In fact, that everyone watching would mm -hmm. have the same encounter mm -hmm. the same environment of yeah. heaven on earth in their home, yes. in their you, office, God. in their workplace, as we do here. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. give it more. Yes. Let there be dramatic yes. increase. Mm -hmm. And we do pray Thank this for Jesus. the honor of the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, yeah, so glad. And um, we are just so grateful for you at home. We um, are praying that you encounter yeah, the Lord yeah, in the most yeah. remarkable way. Yeah. We'll see you in a few moments as we dive into worship together. Thanks, Pastor you're, Bill. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. We love you. Bye. -bye. Bye. One of the things that has marked my life forever is reading the testimonies, the stories of those who have experienced more in God than I have. And it creates something in you that just says, I can't settle for anything less. Do you remember before the weariness and the questions when searching for answers didn't fully satisfy? 
the slightest whisper, your heart was moved. When you fell in love. When you encountered the one who makes every other well run dry. I was dead and then I became alive is the easiest way to describe it. It it's, is that dramatic of, I was blind, but now I see. God had chosen me. Fire filled my body. I began to just be filled with heat, sweating, and out of my mouth came a language I did not know. He was inviting me into all his righteousness and all his perfection. Can you hear it? The answer to your longing heart, there is more of him for you. More grace, more anointing, more truth. This was the moment, the moment that I believe for, the moment that I get my life back, the moment that, that heaven touched my body. A love so pure, a love so real, just cascaded over me. And it's only found in the raw, unrelenting pursuit of the presence of God. He can transform us in a process, but he can also transform us in a moment. In that moment, I fell in love with Jesus. When the glory comes, it recalibrates the heart to the awe of God. Your first love is drawing you. He's wooing you to himself, to intimacy, to revival. In this open heavens, we're about to have power encounters with God, the likes of which we have never seen. God, mark them with your glory. Mark them with your presence. Oops, I almost interrupted a film there. Well, everybody stand if you're able to. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How many, uh, how, for Matt, how many, I'm just learning to talk. <laughs> for how many of you is this your first time to a Bethel event? Oh, wow. Oh, uh, we're so glad you're here. So, it's so fun for us to, to meet new friends and uh, to, to, to walk this walk together. How many of you have actually been here before and you're not afraid to raise your hand? And Look at that. All right, all right. It looks about half and half. Well, we're going to have a wonderful time. Open Heavens is not a slogan. It's not a cute title. It's a reality. It's a reality that is in the heart of God, perfectly designed for every one of his children to live in this seamless connection between this world and his. So much so that this one becomes shaped in values, in thoughts and attitudes, in presence. Heaven is not just a location, it's a person. There's nothing in heaven that is separate from his presence. There's nothing in heaven that is separate from him. It's the person. It's the person of God. And he welcomes us in, in this event, again, to become so overwhelmingly aware of his kindness, his goodness. Did you know both Old and New Testament, the word for presence, both Greek and Hebrew, the word for presence is the word face. So when it talks about the presence of God, he's actually talking about the face of a loving father that comes near. And that's your experience this week, and it's mine. We need it as much as you do. All right, well, we're going to worship Jesus. We've got a great team that's going to help us tonight. Before we do all that, though, I think it'd be really great if you found out how many wonderful people are standing around you. And uh, meet some folks that you don't know, and we'll get started in maybe two minutes. Thanks. Hey.
check, check, check.
needs to go bring what needs to stay of my life oh breath of god bring
Now you call me to boldly to seek your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your face and the strength in. That I must stand in this hole. Show me your face, Lord. Your power and grace, your power and your grace. I can make it. Just see your face. Sing, show me your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your face. And strengthen my legs that I must stand. Show me your face, Lord, in power and grace. I can make it to the end if I could just see your face. Just as you do.
have it all. Oh, that you would have it all. Jesus, I want you to have it all. Nothing hidden, nothing hiding. Oh, that you would have it all tonight, tonight, fresh surrender.
I was thinking about the woman with the issue of blood. And in that moment, she shows the difference between being hungry and being part of a crowd. And in her heart, she determines, I don't have to do what everybody else is doing. All I need to do is touch Jesus. And what I felt for you guys to kick off our conference that there would be this letting go of anything that's like, okay, I gotta be like that person, I gotta be like this person, what's this gonna be like for me? And that you would let your hunger for him lead you in everything that we're doing. That all of a sudden you'd find yourself letting go of the, the fear of man or letting go of the regular things you've done every single time you've gone into worship, but that your pursuit of him would push you to such a place that the next morning you might ask yourself, did I do that? I don't know if you've ever had those moments in God, but I feel like some of you are, are needing those kinds of moments in God where you go after it, you're like, did I do that? 
You might have come thinking, oh, this is going to be a safe, good, refreshing conference. When God, What God has in mind is this raw, radical undoing. You might have been like, oh, man, I can. Here's a couple things I'd love to get some good. No, God has him something in mind for you. And he is undoing something. He is radically wanting to bring you to this raw state. And before we transitioned out of worship, I wanted to give a moment for that praise that comes from that raw undoing that isn't synced up to anything, but lets you flow freely. I wanted to have that moment happen before we transitioned to worship, because I think it's going to break chains. And some of you haven't shouted in a long time. And you might think, oh, shouting and praise. Listen, if the Bible says to do it, I don't care about your opinion of it. And so it's going... There's this shout that does something inside of us. So I want you to let your shout begin to come out. Listen, God doesn't polish masks or egos. He, de he deals with the real us. So, Father, as we gather for the next few days, we ask that you would begin to just cascade over us. That you would knit us together in the Spirit as a dwelling place for your Spirit. And that something raw and radical would happen. something dynamic Holy Spirit begin to move on people and I pray that throughout these next few days there'd be this radical just quickly put your hand on somebody next to you just for a second Holy Spirit we're hungry we're hungry for you and these next few days we ask that you would mark us, that you would mark us. We put down all our walls, all our defenses, all our offenses, everything gets laid down. And the raw us comes forward and meets with you face to face. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well done, well done. Hey, why don't you thank uh, Elisa, our guest worship leader, and Brian and Jen for what they did. So good. So grateful. So go ahead and begin to find your seats. We're so glad you're with us. We're going to make sure we give just a second for you to begin to find your seats before we head into our conference news. We'll get that going in a second here, but I want to make sure that everybody begins to find where they're seated at. We're so grateful you're here. 
Thank you for joining us from around the world, both in person and online. We're so, so expectant for the next few days. So thank you. All right. Let's give another second here as people begin to find their spots so that way they can get all the information they need for the conference. Awesome. That was, that was good, right? That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Just going to build on top one after another. It's so good. I don't know if you're as expectant to hear Bill tonight as I am, but I am eager. All right, we're going to have conference news for you guys to give you information that you need to know about our conference. Go ahead and play it. Welcome everyone to Open Heavens Conference. We are so excited about this week. We are, whether you are here with us in person or watching online, we are glad you have joined us. This is one of my favorite events that we host each year. This Open Heavens Conference, we are here to respond to the call of His presence. Absolutely. That's what it's about. And this is a space for God's oil to fill you to overflowing, where you can encounter Him without limit. We're expecting that for you. So we just invite you into that expectation. It's gonna be amazing. Everybody has received a wristband and this is your ticket into the event. So please wear this at all times. You know, you have to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And he would wear a wristband. He would. He would. In fact, you know what? They should make a wristband that says WWJD. That's a good idea. <laughs> also, we have these incredible swag bags. And inside the swag bag is a beautiful conference booklet that is loaded with important information, as well as a visual for the heart of this year's conference. Uh, this booklet includes incredible information from some of our highlighted partner ministries. The doors open at 9 a.m. for the morning sessions and 5.30 p.m. for the evening sessions. We also want to make you aware of our conference lounge. This is where you're going to go if you have any questions at all while you're here. It's in the East West Fellowship Room just across the hallway from the sanctuary. You'll find the info table there. You can also purchase exclusive Open Heavens merch and find speaker resources in that room as well. That's it for conference news. We are so excited to see what the Lord's going to do over the next few days. And just remember, if you have any questions, visit the conference lounge. We are so excited for what God is doing. I, <clears throat> I am a, a little overwhelmed. Worship was incredible, and I think I lost my voice a little bit. So that's day one. Awesome. You give it all to God. Amen. <clears throat> hey, uh, we were in, in staff prayer this morning, and we were praying for you guys. And... During the prayer time, I heard God say that this would be the catalyst that would start 2023 and that there would be an outpouring of his presence that would actually saturate us in an incredible way, so much so that we would feel like we were, we were kings feasting at the table of the Lord but God was actually going to teach us in this season of overflow how to be hungry and thirsty in spite of overflow, in spite of too much. And this is the beginning of that. This is the start of that. And we are anticipating such incredible time over the next three, four days. And I want to let you know, on October 1st, <clears throat> we have a special event um, put on by the Prophetic Ministries Department. Uh, it's a school of encounters. And what we actually have is four sessions that are actually tailored to go through biblical foundations in, in encounter itself, it go with going through stewarding encounters, and then a guided encounter as well with the Lord, and then processing our encounters after that. And if you would want to join us, we have limited seating for that, but we want to make you aware. Some of you have already signed up for that, and it is a special, special time. And I feel like you may get filled up too much at this conference, but God is going to teach us how to be hungry when we're too full. Amen? Amen. Well, hey, at four years old, I had a unique opportunity to be invited into a school of worship. And I have learned more about worship from this man than I have from any other person in my entire life. I learned how to be a friend of God. I learned how to turn my life to worship. And I, this man 
has impacted my life in such a way that every time he speaks, I see God. Every time he speaks, I, I, I'm not just overwhelmed by the gratitude for him and his life towards worship of God, but I'm, I'm, I'm in gratitude and in awe because I get to see new facets of who God is because of the stewardship on this man's life. Will you stand your feet and welcome Bill Johnson as he comes to share with us tonight. You're nice. Oh, goodness, so good to see you. Thanks, Ben. I thought maybe you are going to introduce my dad. That would have been a scary visitation. He's, he's, he's been in heaven for a while, so uh, he'd probably come shining a bit. So, oh, my goodness. Nice, nice uh, that you guys would uh, join us. And uh, how many of you came from somewhere else? <laughs> How many of you came, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out later, but how many of you actually came from another country outside the U.S.? Oh, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, we're just thrilled. And, and all of you that are guests, it, just do me a favor. Pretend like you're from Bethel and go around and welcome everybody. You know, tell them to feel at home, help themselves to... No, never mind with that last part. Okay. Yeah, we, we really are honored to have you here. It's always a... Uh, you just kind of, you, you strengthen us and you, you uh, expand our understanding of the beauty of the body of Christ. And it's a, it's a real fun journey for us. I felt like I should probably read something. <laughs> Semi-entertaining. An old geezer who had been a retired farmer for a long time, became very bored. He decided to open a medical clinic. He put up a sign outside that said, Dr. Geezer's Clinic, get your treatment for $500. If you're not cured, you get back $1,000. Dr. Young, who was a legitimate doctor, was pretty sure this old geezer didn't know anything about medicine, thought it'd be a great chance to make some money. So he went to Dr. Geezer's cl clinic, and this is what transpired. Dr. Geezer, I've lost all the taste in my mouth. Can you please help me? Dr. Geezer turns to the nurse and says, please bring medicine from box 22. Put three drops in Dr. Young's mouth. She does so, and Dr. Young cries out, ah, that's gasoline. <laughs> Dr. Geezer responds, congratulations, you've got your taste back. <laughs> That'll be $500. <laughs> Dr. Young gets annoyed, goes back after a couple of days, figuring how to recover his money. He said, I've lost all my memory. I cannot remember anything. Dr. Giza turns to the nurse. Please bring medicine from box 22. Put three drops in the patient's mouth. <laughs> Dr. Young says, oh, no, you don't. That's gasoline. Congratulations. You've got your memory back. That will be $500. Dr. Young, after having lost $1,000, leaves mad, comes back after several more days. He says, my eyesight has become weak. I can hardly see. Dr. Geezer says, well, I don't have any medicine for that, so here's your $1,000 back. He says, hey, this is only $500. Congratulations, <laughs> you've got your eyesight back. <laughs> That'll be $500. Oh. <laughs> Um, let me uh, uh, get rid of some books. Um, my wife did uh, this great book. I did a chapter, but she did this wonderful, wonderful book on the power of communion. Let me, let me actually just make an announcement here, way bigger than books. Uh, Lou Engel connected with us several months ago. He's been carrying this prophetic word that this is the beginning of the great communion revival. The Lord actually spoke to him as a series of experiences, a research that the Catholic Church has come out with with uh, an announcement that this is uh, the season of a communion revival. Um, it's actually something that's just springing up all over the earth. We've got to rediscover 
the beauty, the wonder, and the power of partaking in, uh, in the Lord's Supper, in that the body of Christ, the blood of Jesus. And uh, so anyway, this, uh, she just did a wonderful, wonderful job on this. Dreaming with God, um, it's just, uh, just go buy something, would you? Just go buy something. Dreaming with God is co-laboring with the Lord. Um, you know, the first phase of our Christian life is just learning to die to everything. But death always leads to a resurrection. At some point, you gotta demonstrate who Christ is in you. And it always is going to partner with the dream, the dream that he put in your heart. And uh, many people, um, many, many believers crucify the resurrected man and call it discipleship. And we've been summoned into a partnership to actually express his creative solutions and ideas. And uh, so that's back there. Born for significance. It's a master of the purpose, process, and perils of promotion. Nice inviting uh, book, Raising Giant Killers. This is on, uh, Benny and I did this, uh, this book on uh, just raising kids with real destiny and purpose. And the last one is Open Heavens, most recent book, Positioning Yourself for Encountering the God of Revival. It actually deals with three areas, revival, uh, reformation, and renaissance. I believe that we're going to see, and, and it's not one or the other, is that one leads to the other, but brings the reality of the previous with it. And, uh, and I think what the Lord is looking to do is have a full-on creative expression in the earth through God's people. So anyway, um, let's see. Did anybody have a birthday today? Yeah, come here. Today. Today. Anybody else? Come on. Today. Come. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Happy birthday. You, you, you pick one. You, you get to pick, you get to just tip, pick, sorry. I'll do the Can communion. you see? You got communion? Got it. Bless you. Happy birthday. All right. Just pick whatever you would like. There we go. Bless you. And one more. All right. I'll take two over Oh, excellent. Thank you. Take your pick. Uh, dreaming. All right. That goes to overflow. We love you in overflow. All right. There we go. There's somebody here that has a, uh, you're just really suffering of late, of real, real intense nausea. And um, I sensed earlier during worship that um, there was either a diagnosis of cancer or it concerns you because it's been there for a while. It's not something you can take a pill for and it goes away. And I believe that the Lord is, is healing you of that in, infirmity. There's also someone who has an issue with the eyesight, and it's, I don't know how to describe it, it's like flashes of light. It's uh, something that uh, obstructs, uh, affects your ability to see. You don't know, don't know if it's a nerve thing, a brain thing, what it is, but there's something to do with eyesight that the Lord is, is healing. Um, all right, is that, was the flashes of light or the, the nausea? Light, all right. And anybody that has the light thing, just stand up. And uh, the nausea, uh, the nausea issue, just stand up. There's this, yeah, just stand up where you are. And uh, anyone else, I, I really felt strong that there was someone over here, maybe, maybe it's, it's you, someone over to my left with this, this abdominal issue. And uh, yeah, all right. And my goodness, that was the section for light right there. <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody notices, but like they're all over there. It's, it's a... It's a group, it's a club of some sort. Uh, you know what, honestly, whenever I see a, a lot of people with one specific issue that, that we call out, sitting all close together, that's an unusual coincidence, and that's the language of the Spirit. He's emphasizing what he's about to do. And right now, he's about to release you from that, that infirmity and affliction on your eyes in the name of Jesus. And on this side of the room, you get it too. You get it too, all right. Um, and the overflow rooms, please make sure that whoever's helping to lead in there, make sure that that gets done too. I want you to extend your hand towards each of these that are, that are standing. And uh, I, you don't have to actually ask God to heal them because he's already determined to. Jesus already made a payment and we don't need to have him make it again. What I want you to do is I want you to just declare the healing grace of Jesus into their bodies. Yeah, right now. 
Yeah, just do that right now, out loud. You don't have to yell it, but just declare. Speak to the eyes. Be cleared of the affliction on that in Jesus' name. The nausea, the issue in the abdominal area, be uprooted now in Jesus' name. And healing to the trauma that brought it. Bring absolute freedom and liberty in the name of Jesus. There are those who, uh, just keep praying. There are those who uh, suffer uh, with ongoing uh, migraines. And you've had it for, some of you have had it as long as you can remember. I want you to stand quick, 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 quick. Just stand up. Somebody close to them, just put your hand on, on their head and just declare this ends today. Just, just, just pray that over them. This just ends. In fact, like you were lifting something off their head, lift it off and just said this, we just break that power of trauma and we lift that off of them today. Lord, we pray right now that you would release the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit to re-energize the brain, the head, every area that has suffered trauma and injury. And we declare that healing grace in Jesus' name. There's somebody here with the migraine thing that actually, it, I don't know how this works, but it actually works down your spine. And there's something to do with your neck. Is that you here? Yeah, it actually works right down. So just put your hand on her upper back right there and just declare, we release you from this in Jesus' name today. In Jesus' name today. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. Pray just a moment longer. Just a moment, because the Lord's healing some more people. Some of you will get accidentally healed. So <laughs> you were just sitting too close, too close to the blessing. Collateral blessing. Yeah, we declare that, declare that in Jesus' name. There's somebody who broke your right ankle and you've suffered with it since. It could have been six weeks ago. It could have been 60 years ago. It doesn't matter. Uh, somebody broke that right ankle and you have suffered with it since. Is that you? The Lord's healing you right now. Somebody put, lay your hands on that right. An, another woman, lay down, or lay, don't lay down. Reach down and put your hand. <laughs> Reach down, lay your hand on that right ankle. Somebody right there on that right ankle. Just get in there and declare the healing grace of Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. How many of you with the migraines, you actually, you actually felt that thing lift off of you? Put, put a hand up high. I want you to see. Yeah, look. In fact, stand up. Just stand. We want, just stand if that, that thing, yeah, it's just gone. Amen. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Lord. There's someone who has uh, an issue of frequently breaking your toes. Who is that? Who's that? There's, there's, there just, it just seems to happen every, maybe every few years or something. Is that you? Isn't that crazy? Somebody, somebody just reached down. Do you have pain tonight? Is there an ongoing issue? Or is it, you have pain tonight? Somebody reached down, lay hands right on the toes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just declare in the name of Jesus, he is the one who strengthens bones. I break the spirit of trauma and we declare the healing grace of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want everyone to stand, if you would, for just a, just a brief moment. Bless you. How's your, how's your toes doing? How's your toes? You're not sure yet. All right. Well, then do whatever you need to do to make sure. All right. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. I don't mean just tonight. You've been set up. Yeah. I've been set up. Yeah. I believe in predestination. Yes. All of us are predestined to be like Jesus. Yeah. There's no other option. You can take the slow road <laughs> or not. But seriously, I believe that the Lord is about to fill us with the spirit of revival. Yeah. It's a very wonderful and very costly expression. So I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes just because I don't want you to be distracted. I wanna take some physical pro uh, posture, uh, lifting your hands before the Lord or something in that way. Some may want to kneel in some way. We're, we're going to take a few minutes for this. I'm not rushing. 
I'm not rushing th through this. You set us up. I know you did. You arranged all of our lives to be here for such a time as this. And I ask now for the glory of the name Jesus, for the promotion of the gospel in all the earth. Let us be filled now with the spirit of revival. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, God. So, some of you don't even know what it is. But you just know in your heart you need it. Thank you. I pray for our online community the same. Yes. Overflow rooms the same. Holy Spirit, come in such power. Repeat this prayer after me. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to do with me as you please. Amen. Amen. All right. Go ahead and be seated, I think. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this different. Um, some of you just really sense that the Spirit of God on you. I, I want you to stay standing. You, you can just tell something's happening or, or Neil, but there, there just needs to be some physical response to him and what he's doing. I'm not going to orchestrate it. I'm not going to direct it. But it's important that we, that we respond. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In some way, respond to him.
Just, just keep at it. I want to ask some of my team to begin to walk around the room and lay hands on, on people. Those of you that are able, if God's really touching you, then obviously stay where you are. But the rest, if you could just walk around the room, just begin to lay hands on people. He has an agenda tonight. And we're going to do the best we can to cooperate with his agenda. Just a, just a few more minutes, please don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> just let him do as he pleases. I pray this happens in people's homes, offices right now. We need him. We need him to fill us. We just say more, more, increase this, Lord. And those who are standing, those who are sitting, increase. Lord, just increase this, this deep, deep touch of the Spirit of God, this deep, deep touch of the Holy Spirit. Increase here, Lord. Increase here. Increase now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you can say you came for more? I mean, you really did. You came for more. And we don't get to choose what that looks like. Sometimes it's very, very quiet. I've had some of the most profound things happen in my life. Nobody in the room ever would have recognized. But he touched me. Other things were much more extreme. But he's God. He does what he pleases. So we pray for that right now to increase in every single person. We pray that every person leaves with more than they thought was possible. More than they thought was possible. The Lord's gonna give some of you a new song in the night. You'll wake up with a melody, with words, and you begin to, don't think about publication, think about giving it to him, sing it to him, minister to him. He'll give you deep, deep insights of his own nature, his own person. We just pray for that to increase, Lord, throughout this, throughout this place, this building, this property, in Jesus' name. Increase, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 
Sing it again. Hallelujah. 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 Sing it again. Sing it again. Thank you, Lord. There's at least a half a dozen people that came and you, you've had a new, a, a new experience in recent days where you have considered suicide and that's never been an issue for you. And yet you've, you've come actually traumatized by this thing that seems to be haunting you. And I'm not gonna ask you to stand out. Sometimes we, we will do that, but I'm just gonna ask, ask to make sure you're in the group that's standing because Jesus is about to set people free. Jesus is about to set people free. I, I, think for, I think honestly for some of you, it's important that you tell your spouse that I've been, this has come out of nowhere and it is a spirit. And what we're going to do, we're just gonna declare it ends tonight. The power of that voice is broken in Jesus' name. And uh, whatever trauma invited at, we just ask, Holy Spirit, come, bring healing right to the root of that thing. Church, I want you to just begin to pray because there's people being set free from other things, um, other, 
wrong attractions that the Lord is setting people from. There's a number of things that he's doing, listen, without a sermon. He's doing it because he's God and he loves people. So church, I want you just to extend your hand towards people around you and pray. Just pray right now, out loud, pray. Pray, Lord, release people. Release people, let liberty come into the house of God. Freedom come into the house of God. New levels, new levels, new levels, new levels. If you have any of those kind of issues that you think would fall into that category, make sure you're standing because I, I believe Jesus is going to honor that step of faith and really visit and touch you. So we just declare that now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, in Jesus' name. You know what, he's just doing a lot of stuff here, so I, I, I hope that you can be patient with this, just trying to turn with every little ebb and flow in this river. There are some individuals in this room, I don't think I've ever declared this before, uh, ever, but there, there's probably, goodness, I'm gonna guess at least 25 people, probably more now, probably 50 people, that the Lord is actually imparting to you, and it's actually having, you can sense it in your, in your core, imparting to you an anointing for intercession. And there's, it's, it's a groaning of the heart of God that some of you will actually physically feel, and it will be a confirmation to you that he is giving you a clarity and an authority in prayer to shape the course of history. He will drop things in your heart completely random, out of your normal sequence of thought or involvement, and you will pray and things will happen. So I, I want you just to um, just respond to that right now for a moment. The, the Lord is, uh, is releasing a intercessory prayer anointing over people right now. You're going to think different, you're going to speak different, you're going to pray different. Your longevity in prayer is about to change. It won't be a discipline. It'll be a burning within your soul. There'll be an inability to stop until the burden is released. We declare that, we pray for the release of that. And it's not gonna be all women. It's not gonna be all women. There are men in this room that are about to get a surprise. Not yet, not yet, yeah, yeah, thank you. Just keep pressing into this just a moment longer. <clears throat> Hosanna, you're one of them. Haley, go lay hands on Hosanna. I want anyone and everyone in the room that, that just has that sense that God has called you for a, a unique expression in prayer. I don't wanna give you a title, but you know his hand is upon you in the area of prayer. I want you to stand, because I'm gonna pray something very specific over you. Just stand. In some measure, it's everybody in the room. I, I get that, but you're just acknowledging a, a summons by God right now. 
I'm going to pray something that I believe to be critical, extremely important. I want to preface it with a few statements. If you've been equipped and called to have a special emphasis in the area of prayer, the Lord has made you, <clears throat> hyper is the wrong word, but I'm going to use it, hypersensitive to what's happening. <clears throat> you are sometimes painfully aware of circumstances, of what people are suffering with, uh, conditions of cities, even nations. Here's the problem with it. It's easy for you to pray from the problem instead of from the solution. And what I'm gonna pray is <clears throat> people who shape history pray from heaven to earth. Pray from the heart of the Father towards the infirmities, afflictions, and disturbances that are in the earth. We're not, we're not a people that have to plead with him to do something. When Jesus said it is finished, it literally meant his job is done. He has set in motion everything that needs to be done until the earth is filled with his glory. He has set something in motion and an end result has already been predetermined that the earth would be filled with his glory. What must happen is there must be a people that learn, need to learn how to implement the strategies of heaven, the heart of the Father, and pray it and declare it, release it into the earth. Father, I pray that right now, that you would put a grace upon us, a way of thinking, a way of seeing that's different, different than we've ever known before, and that we would become clear in our prayers, clear in our convictions, clear as to the strategies of heaven, the heart of the Father that we've been assigned to implement and release and manifest in the earth. I pray for that in Jesus' name. It, multiply that, multiply, multiply that anointing, that grace. Multiply that anointing, that grace. Some of you, the, the Lord is going to put you into the presence of officials, of corporations and uh, political positions, and it will be because you are trusted as one who hears from God in prayer. And uh, you, you can't flaunt it, you can't broadcast it, you have to keep it secret. But he's gonna trust you with it. So Father, I pray that. I pray that. I pray that world leaders would come under the influence of prophetic prayers prophetic intercessors. Take, take another minute, please, and pray into this. Everybody pray into this. If you're, if you're seated, extend your hand towards somebody. <clears throat> Do something to partner with the release of this in the earth. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Okay, I'm going to ask everyone to stand one last time for a corporate prayer. <laughs> so you're getting your calisthenics in tonight. It's, once again, just put your hands in front of you. I want to pray just very simply for everybody here. Teach us how you move, Lord. Teach us how you move. Teach us. Teach us how you move. Teach us to recognize your mood, your heart, your mind, what you're thinking, what you're desiring, what you're craving, what you're longing for in the earth. Help us to stop being preoccupied with inferior things. Help us, God. Help us to stop being, giving ourselves to things that don't matter.
if you're kneeling or laying on the floor, just stay where you are. If God is, is touching you uniquely while you're standing, stay where you are. Otherwise, I'm going to ask everyone to be seated. I've got just a few verses to read, then we'll figure out how to wrap this up. I, I, the Lord's not true, obviously. I, I don't believe he is at all. <laughs> and may we never recover, right? But I, I, I felt so strong. I, we don't have time for me to teach. I, I just, I got up here and it was obvious he had other things in mind. And there, there are, are people that are being dramatically, dramatically changed right now. And I, I invite that so deeply in my life. I'm in constant need of his touch. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do. I can't do anything worthwhile <laughs> without his touch. I'm going to read a passage to you out of Ephesians chapter 3. If you've got your Bibles open, because I'm going to read it, I don't know, I'll say much afterwards. Uh, just uh, what, I, what I think I'm going to do is talk for just a few minutes. And then. Uh, and then we'll figure out something. <clears throat> I'm going to read three verses to you out of Ephesians chapter 3 beginning with verse 17. Now, there are people around you that are being touched by the Lord. Um, I, I don't want them to pull out of that. Yeah, I, I'm going to respect what God's doing for them enough to just let what's happening happen. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Yeah. Let me make just, just some brief comments. The church at Ephesus was given this book, this letter by Paul. It's the only letter, it's the only epistle that didn't have a word of correction. This church was extreme in presence, extreme in power. Can I use the word extreme in success in a kingdom sense? Their impact on their world around them. They were, they were notable for their discernment, their giftings, their authority. It was birthed in miracles. The Spirit of God came, and this entire movement in Ephesus was birthed out of the miraculous. The momentum now is many years down the road, and Paul writes this letter without a word of correction. And in chapter one, my question that I ask, is what do you give to someone who has everything? Here's, here's a group. They're just blessed, and they're strong, and they're mature. What do you give to someone who has everything? And so he prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I pray that God would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. A spirit of wisdom and revelation. Then he begins to unpack a little bit of what that looks like. And right here is the great prize. It's something that everybody in this room aches for, but doesn't know it. Right here is something that defines why we were created. It defines the purpose of our creation, the purpose, the design of our own being, the way we are created, spirit, soul, and body. Everything about us was designed 
for this one thing. And it's the last phrase of verse 19. And it is absolutely beyond human comprehension that you may be filled with the fullness of God. It's not a, it's not a, a, a doctrine that we sit upon thinking someday. See, every time he opens truth to us, it comes with an invitation for encounter. Because revelation that doesn't lead to encounter just equips us to be a better arguer with people who disagree. And he's not doing that. He's not equipping us for debate. He's revealing truth so that we can encounter the God of truth so that we actually become those who illustrate truth. We model. The word becomes flesh again. And he has set us up for something. And I, I, I didn't have a sense of what he was going to do tonight that isn't over. But I can, I can physically feel the tangible presence of God in a way that, that is uh, terrifyingly wonderful. Or wonderfully terrifying. <laughs> Not really sure how to describe it, but I know he's in charge. People ask me questions. Why, why wasn't your wife healed? I don't know. I, I don't need an answer. I've got presence. That's all I need. And quite honestly, my response is, he doesn't work for me. I work for him. And he has set us on a track. And that track is that you may be filled not to your capacity but to his capacity the one who holds the universe in his hand that one wants to fill you as an individual us as a corporate expression with his fullness Dan, would you give me that water bottle right to your right there? Yeah, that, that one. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Most people would consider that to be full. but it's not. Now it's full. To be filled with the Spirit is not to be a container. Economically, abundance is not measured in what you have, it's measured in what you've given away. And in hosting the presence of God is the same concept. It's measured by what flows through you. Let's stand. It was water, not soda, so we're okay. We're dry. I believe we have a ministry team. So yeah, let's get the ministry team in here. Um, I, I don't apologize for the uniqueness of tonight. It's, it was, I, it's just, it is. It is, and it isn't over. So uh, I, I believe that some of you are going to have unusual encounters with the Lord even as you sleep tonight. Um, and I, I want to encourage you, uh, don't be afraid of it. 
Uh, he, he just comes. And uh, I believe God's doing something here I, at Bethel, and I'm thankful you're here. And, and I don't want to downgrade that or, or take away from anything that he's doing. We're so grateful. But more importantly is the hour that we live in and what he has determined to cause to take place in the earth. Yes. Yes. And there's something that happens when the people gather together in his name with the slightest interest in what he might be doing. It's all he needs. It's an invitation to come and to change and to transform. And I am ready and hungry for more. I am. I, I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need great things to happen to be entertained. My identity is not in any of those things. I just, I live with the awareness. He must be glorified in all the earth. He must be glorified. The earth must be filled with the glory of the Lord. It must happen. I can't make it happen, but I can yield to see it happen. I can cooperate so that it truly happens. So Lord, we invite that through this group. Every meal, every time of fellowship, every cup of coffee at Hebrews, everything that we do, the breakout sessions, everything would be so permeated with the presence of the Spirit of God that we would leave this week truly a transformed people who knows what it is to be full of the Holy Spirit. I pray for that. Let's, let's get the team in here. <clears throat> what we're going to do, Ben, are you coming up to help with this? Okay. Here's what I think, what I believe is going to happen. Some of you just need to go. Some of you are jet lagged and whatever. I, I get that. We, we have great mercy on you. Um, but um, some of you, you need to seal what is happening tonight. Others of you need to respond with personal, private prayer time. Go back to your hotel room, your home, whatever, wherever you stay, and have time with the Lord to pray. Because I believe something is initiated in the atmosphere. I can actually uh, tangibly feel. Others of you need to receive prayer. And we've got a trusted team here that would love to get their hands on you and, uh, and, uh, and to pray for you. Those on our online community, we've got pastors throughout that part of our world that would love to minister to you. If there's anyone here, there's always a chance. There's people that come to these things that came with family members or whatever that really have never been born again. There is no personal relationship with Jesus. You have maybe an interest, uh, whatever it might be. But we've got a team down here that would love to be able to pray for you. So Ben, why don't you help me? Just, just help me. I need some help. <laughs> I think we all need help. Oh, my goodness. This is, what, this is what we came here for. Um, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're still encountering God where you're at, that's, that's great. I'm going to pray over us. This, this thing about uh, dreams and visions is, is something that God absolutely loves. He, he loves the night season, and he's not just going to encounter you in the day while you're here. He's going to encounter you in the night, and we believe for that. And I want to release that right now. Go ahead and just put your hands on your heart or hands extended, however you want to receive. Father, we release that right now, an anointing for dreams and visions in the night, that God, you would encounter your people in significant ways while they're here, that God, you would touch them whether they're in a hotel, an Airbnb, at a friend's house, it doesn't matter. God, would you touch them incredibly? And God, I, I, I ask this, not just for those who are here, who are online, who are in the overflow, but God, all of the families that are represented, that families would be more marked with encounters in this whole season of Open Heavens <clears throat> Conference. God, you would touch them, you would mark them. We ask for not just, uh, not just dreams, we ask for uh, angelic visitations, we ask for face-to-face -face encounters with you. God, that they would be marked and never the same again because dreams are not a second-class encounter with you. God, it is the real thing, and we release that in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. 
And that, that even while you sleep, you would rest well. We speak to your bodies, the divine rest would be over you and you would be energized to receive more than what you actually have a capacity for. God, would you strengthen our mortal bodies to actually receive more than we had a capacity for yesterday. In Jesus' name, grace upon grace for everyone here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you come? We have an amazing ministry team here that's ready to pray for you. If you are leaving, then go in the name of Jesus. Rest well. Enjoy your sleep. We declare Psalms 127 verse 2 over you. God provides for his beloved even while they sleep. Bless you, and we'll see you in the morning. Oh
Generations 